So one of the reasons that you're so well known here in Tucson is because on January 8th, um, when the shooting happened uh, in, at the Safeway and Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords and um, the victims were shot, they were brought here, you, you kind of became the face of, of the rescue effort to save people's lives and to help them get on the path to recovery. And one of the things that I've always heard people say um, when I write about uh, gun background checks, things like that, ways to, to address gun violence, is, well, you know, that doesn't really happen very often. It's, it's a rarity, and if, if we can't change our laws in, in response to that, to those sort of anomalies. What do you say to people when they, when do they say those sort of things? Well, I, I say, you know, just do they know what they're talking about? I mean, you know, the most people who talk about guns and are adamant about guns have never shot someone and then never been shot. So, um, you know, why did we make such a big deal about that one day when someone got shot here in our hospital when we see it every single day? In, I had a, a person that was exactly the same age as Gabrielle Giffords, shot in the head in the exact same location, but didn't get any of the uh, attention because they weren't famous. So um, I'm glad that Gabrielle Giffords got as good a care as she did all around with the rehabilitation and the outcome was so good for her and that you know, we we're finally bringing this up to the surface where we can have a discussion about this as a, as a society and community. But I think just to know the staggering numbers that we're talking about, the fact that I spent my entire life with gunshot wounds and seeing it time and time again, and whether it's a child or whether it's a police officer that got shot, it's, a, it's just an uh, epidemic type of problem in our country. And, and, you know, all right, so you think a lot of people deserve to be shot, then that's fine, and I'll take care of all of them, but did you know that you're paying for it? You know, who pays for all of these gunshot wounds every day? and that are crippling and, and debilitating and making it so that they'll never pay taxes and they'll never work again and but become a burden on society, do they know that they're paying for that? You know, actually, the, the wealthy here in town, do they know they're actually paying for that now anyways? So I think that type of information needs to be put into their minds so that when they discuss who should have a gun, how many guns they want to carry, whether it's for home protection or not. I don't believe in home protection at all. I have guns, but I don't believe in home protection. All I know is that if you try to protect yourself, someone's going to get shot. You know, so uh, when you make up your mind as to where you make your stance on, on that law and you as a society wants to decide that, I just want that to be an educated decision. So we were talking earlier that you had some ideas on, you know, people need to know. Make an educated decision. If you know this is what a gun can do, um, people will say, well, it, the gun isn't the problem, it's the person who's using the gun. It's the, the mental state of the person who shot the people in front of the Safeway. Um, yeah, but you know the thing, <laughs> okay, it, guns don't kill people, people kill people. Right. Yeah, but you know, let me see you kill someone with a boxing glove, okay? It's a lot harder to do <laughs> with a blunt right. object than it is with a knife, and then it's even harder when you shoot somebody. So. Uh, we also have staggering numbers of suicides in this country. And those suicides are not people who are crazy that just uh, are, are mentally ill forever. There's, there's a number of those people, but the vast majority of people who commit suicides are just in situational depression with, you know, economic factors, you know, uh, things doing with their loved ones, mm -hmm. uh, college students with bad grades. You know, when they make a decision that they want to end their life, and they use a gun, that's irreversible, you know, and, and while suicide attempts are probably equal in other societies, they're just not as successful as they are in the United States, and that's just irreversible when you take a gun to your own head. So, um, you know, uh, there, there, there's just a lot of reasons why people try, and mental health is a ma major issue that we need to discuss. Um, there are some people that we'll never fix. No drug will fix them, surgery will fix them, and I think it's great for society if we institutionalize them. And that thought process of us never, never doing that, I think, is too extreme on one end. But we also have you know, young kids that, uh, for the silliest of reasons, will put a gun in their mouth. I mean, so, so we just need to have these kinds of discussions, and, and, and as a society, 
we say this is what we're going to do, then I feel great that we made an informed decision. But I think that there's too much marketing going on and people have no concept of idea what, of what gunshot wounds really are like.